So this video will be a discussion of number one from the 2024 AP Calc AB and BC exams. This is a calculator question and it's pretty typical of what is sitting in position one in a free response set on a year to year basis. Setup for this one gives us this table of values. So we've got time being measured in minutes. We've got C of T being measured in degrees Celsius. And it goes on to describe that we've got a situation here where the temperature of a cough of coffee in a cup at time t minutes is modeled by a decreasing differentiable function c. We've got values of that function c on the interval 0 to 12 given in the table shown. Part A asks us to approximate c prime of 5 using the average rate of change of c on the interval 3 to 7. Show the work that leads to your answer and include units of measure. They don't always say to use the average rate of change on the interval 3 to 7. Uh, sometimes they just say use the data in the table to approximate C prime of 5. So it would be on us to recognize that 5 is the midpoint of this stretch of the t-axis from 3 to 7. And so we can estimate the tangent slope for this function C at 5 by using the secant slope on the interval that has 5 as its midpoint which would be the interval 3 to 7. So an average rate of change is just a standard slope calculation. So in this case, I'm going to need to take C of 7 minus C of 3 and divide by the corresponding difference in time values. It does ask us to include units of measure. So we've got units of the function, degrees Celsius, and then units of time. So we're, we're looking at degrees Celsius per minute for our ending units for part A. Part B asks us to use a left Riemann sum with three subintervals indicated by the data in the table to approximate the value of this definite integral. So the value of this definite integral can be approximated with a left Riemann sum by recognizing that the width of our first rectangle is going to be three units, then our second rectangle four units, and our final rectangle five units. The left endpoints of each of these subintervals would be 100. 85 and 69. 55 is not going to be used in the calculation. That's only the right endpoint of the final subinterval. So we structure our calculation like this. You don't have to toss it into the calculator. Uh, if you make a mistake with that, you would get penalized. So this right here would receive full credit. But if you do put that in the calculator, you should end up with 985. And then they ask us to interpret the meaning of 1 12th times the value of that integral within context. Uh, it's a little odd that they didn't ask us to include the 1 12th in the estimate that we were making. Uh, they just asked us to estimate the value of the definite integral, and now they're saying, okay, if you multiply that definite integral's value by 1 12th, what would that represent within context? So hopefully you recognize that the difference between these limits of integration is 12, and because we're dividing the integral by 12 or multiplying it by 1 12th, same effect, we're looking at an average value of the function c of t calculation structured right here. So what does this represent within context? It would represent the average temperature of the coffee in the cup measured in degrees Celsius on the interval 0 to 12. Part C says on the interval from 12 to 20, the rate of change of the temperature in the coffee in the cup is modeled by c prime of t. So we don't have access to the same thing on the interval 12 to 20 as we had on the interval 0 to 12. It's not C of T that they give us, it is C prime of T, so that is the rate of change of the temperature of the coffee in the cup. They tell us the units of C prime are degrees Celsius per minute. They ask us to find the temperature of the coffee at time T equals 20. Show the setup for your calculation. So this is hopefully a very familiar calculation for you within your AP Calculus course. We have the temperature of the coffee at time 12 being 55, we now want to know what the temperature of the coffee is at time 20. So I'm going to take the temperature at time 12, and I'm going to add on how much the temperature changes by on the interval from 12 to 20 by integrating the rate of change of the temperature of the coffee in the cup. Calculator's in play for this, so I can evaluate this on the calculator. And you do have to make sure you include three digits past the decimal for your accu accuracy here. And that would give you a result of 40.329. And then the final part of this says that for that model that we just used in part C, we can show that C double prime of T is equal to this expression right here. On the interval 12 to 20, determine whether the temperature of the coffee is changing at a decreasing or an increasing rate. So the phrasing of this, the temperature is changing at a decreasing or an increasing rate. 
this is phrasing that indicates we're trying to analyze the rate of change of a rate of change. That would involve use of the second derivative. And the second derivative is pretty easy to analyze. You've got a component right here within the numerator, e to a power, no matter what you put in place of t within that power, e to a power is always positive. Uh, 100 minus t, as long as t is between 12 and 20, which this indicates that we are going to remain there, 100 minus t is also always positive, and something squared is always positive. All of the components of this are positive because we're not doing any subtraction, we're multiplying and dividing with a bunch of positive values. We're definitely looking at a positive value for C double prime of T as long as T is on the interval 12 to 20. Because of that, the temperature of the coffee is changing at an increasing rate on this interval.